Welcome to this five-part series titled Lean Design, or Creating the Perfect Value Stream. So what do we mean by that? What is a perfect value stream? Let's define that. Now, if we're building a house, you'd kind of expect to have a, have a set of drawings, don't you think? Uh, that were created by an architect who ideally interviewed you to determine your specific needs and requirements. And then those drawings can be followed by the construction team to end up with your dream home. Well, we kind of expect to have the same thing for our business procedures, whether it's in a factory or in an office or in a hospital. When we design a procedure, we'd like to follow a proven methodology, a step-by-step -step methodology that's been proven over many decades and end up with a good design that can then be implemented. People can be trained to do it that way and we can end up with the optimum results. So the optimum results for a lean procedure would be a, a a procedure or a value stream that's extraordinarily free of waste. So the steps in that procedure are adding value step-by-step step to the end user or the customer, whether it's a service or it's an actual physical product. So the characteristics of a lean value stream would be low waste, high productivity, no defects or errors in the shortest possible time without rushing, but by being able to build those products or deliver those services step by step by step, you'll be able to achieve that shortest possible time. So that's what we'd like to achieve. And we're, gonna, we're going to achieve that by designing our processes, following a proven methodology that we'll share in this video series. So stay tuned. Let's talk first about what is a value stream and what is a lean design in a little more detail. Okay. so. Just uh, some quick definitions uh, to get started. What is a value stream? So the term value stream is a term that's become popular since probably the late 90s uh, in the world of lean. And basically it means taking a start to finish look at a series of work steps to deliver either a service or a product at the end. So instead of focusing on pieces of that total process, we want to take a step back and look at all of the steps, all of the work that's required from beginning to end. So the beginning could be in a manufacturing environment, uh, suppliers, and the end could be actually delivering that product to a customer or actually getting paid by that customer. Wouldn't that be nice? So by taking a step back from a value stream perspective, we're making sure that we're looking at everything and not simply focusing on things that we know or things that we like. Uh, the other thing is lean design. So a lean design is what you'll be learning in this five part series, but basically it's a methodology, a method, that requires data and analysis and some calculations to actually put that work, typically we're talking about work, into a flow. So we can achieve these goals that we mentioned of the shortest possible time, again, not by rushing, but by linking and balancing that work together and achieving zero defects or as close to zero as we can get and the highest possible productivity because we're eliminating wasted effort along that flow. and. So basically a lean design would be same as uh, designing your dream home, end up with a design that we can then implement. And then of course comes the hard part. You have to execute, you have to train people to do the work that way. And then you have to follow up, you have to audit and you have to maintain it and then continually improve it. So it's not as simple as just the design, but the design is a critical component. If you don't start with a good design, then you're starting off on the wrong foot clearly. Now I've used the word flow a few times, so let's go back to that and uh, talk in a little more detail what is meant by flow, because this is a really core concept and something we need to achieve in our design. So think of a river. So a river is able to go from the headwaters, wherever those may be, like the Mississippi River is probably up in Minnesota, and, or not probably, it is up in Minnesota. And as it flows down, there are tributaries that come in, other rivers connect until we end up uh, at the Gulf of Mexico near New Orleans with a big, huge, wide river. So that is flow. And you'll notice the river doesn't stop. It's able to move continually without delay, without hindrance. So that's what we'd like to achieve in our work design, that when we launch a product, that product is able to advance continually without waiting, either waiting for resources or waiting for people or waiting because it has to go outside and then come back, etc. The closer we can get to building that product step by step by step by step without delay, without waiting, then the closer we're going to be getting to perfect flow. And the 
closer we get to perfect flow, the closer we get to optimum response time to our customers, the minimum amount of work and process inventory, the highest possible quality, and the highest possible productivity, all these goals and floor space. So all these goals that we want to achieve are linked to this idea of achieving optimum flow. And that is done by design. And of course, the, the stream is not just a stream. Ideally, we'd like that stream to become a river. If we think of the water in the, in the stream as products, we'd like to actually grow the company through this strategy and be able to grow that river. Uh, you know, so it goes from a, a, a mountain stream to the Mississippi, if we can. There are obstacles uh, in the achievement of flow. So let's list a few of these obstacles. Uh, understanding that these are the kind of things we'll need to work on when we actually get to uh, get to the, the design part of our effort. So some of the obstacles to flow that we need to resolve. Number one, lack of standardization. So if you don't have standard work definition and we don't have people that are trained and doing the work in the same way, that's a problem because you're introducing variability to the flow. Some people are going to be doing the work in different ways. That's not going to be conducive to good flow. So standard work is a core requirement. Number two, just inherent variability is an obstacle to flow. So in a mixed model environment, you're building different products. You have human beings doing the work. Human beings are inherently imbalanced. And you've got things like changes and mix. You have those darn customers that are asking for different things in different quantities. So all of those factors are inherently uh, variable. And so we need to design, as part of our design effort, an environment that's robust, that can handle changes in mix and volume uh, smoothly and not lose productivity, not lose that time. So variability is a big obstacle. Another one, changeover. So if you have machines or even production lines that you have to change over from one product to another, from one type of product to another, or changing over tooling and dyes, all of that kind of work uh, takes place while the line is stopped. So if the line stopped, nothing is flowing. So that's pretty clearly an obstacle. And there are some tools in the Lean Toolkit to address a changeover called SMED, and that's something you may have to uh, get involved in. Uh, another one, quality or, or defects is a big obstacle to flow. So sure, customers want high quality product. That's a good reason to improve quality. But also the other reason to improve quality is quality is really damaging to our ability to flow. Because if products have to get reworked, then probably they're going backwards in the flow, right? They're flowing to a certain point and then there's a defect and they have to get redone. So that is not good flow if it's going backwards. Uh, of course, if you have scrap, that's even more damaging because at whatever point scrap may occur, it affects every process from that point all the way up to the beginning, all the way upstream. Not a pretty picture. So uh, resolving quality issues is a critical part of our analysis as well. Outside processing. If we have work that we have to do in-house and then the product has to go out-house to get plated, you know, out of house plated or some other process we don't have internally, and then come back. Well, sometimes that's unavoidable, right? There may be processes that we simply don't have in-house or can't have in-house. So we're not saying this is a, a magical solution that we can overcome, but uh, we just understand that it's advantageous for us to be vertically integrated as much as possible internally. And that's why you see lean companies that, are, that move typically over time in that direction of bringing processes in-house so they can achieve better flow. What else? Batching. So if we do work on a batch, you're typically working on one product at a time in the batch. The rest of the units are waiting. So we're adding the waste of waiting to our flow, and clearly that is uh, detrimental to achieving this continuous flow goal that we want. So maybe I'll leave it at that. You can probably think of a lot of other things that uh, may obstruct flow. Material delivery <laughs> is another big one. But uh, we'll leave it at that. But the point is that as we go through our design process, these are all the things that we need to analyze and look at. And while there's no magic wand to overcome these challenges, these are the rocks in the river that we need to be working on to achieve flow. And they're probably things that we'll be working on for some time. Leave it at that. Uh, in the next part, part two, uh, I'll be sharing with you a case history of a company that went from $5 million to $25 million 
by applying this concept of flow and good line design and putting together a methodology and making that part of their business strategy. So a pretty exciting uh, example of how this can be applied and really generate outstanding results. We'll also talk, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at how this, this uh, flow that we're talking about can actually be measured in terms of uh, quantifiable metrics. Okay, so we'll see you then. See you in a couple days.